So I have to tell you, I have been so excited putting the exhibition together. It is so fun to see everybody's art in this gorgeous place. Uh, I just spent the last three hours editing the video that I shot today. And uh, I hope that you all like it. I'm, I'm excited to share it with everyone and, and uh, look forward to showing people in person as well. Um, it's after having looked at everybody's art on my website for so many months, it's so exciting to see it in this setting. Yeah, looking forward, looking forward, forward to it too, to see it actually in real life, you know, besides digital, you know, so, so same here. Exactly. All right, well, it looks like we have just one more minute. And so I'm gonna go ahead and um, just kind of get going here. Uh, I'm sure other people um, will uh, be logging in and I'll just continue to admit them uh, as they join. Uh, but essentially what my plan is, uh, is to, oh great, Rosario just logged in, is to play the video and kind of do it in a start and stop fashion where we kind of break it up and pause right as we go into each artist and then let the artist talk about uh, their artwork as we review it. Um, and then at the end of it, once we've had all of the artists kind of starting and you know going through and talking about their art, we'll replay it one more time uh, without a lot of break um, at the end with music so that people can just kind of sit back uh, and watch it and enjoy. Uh, we were a little bit torn as to whether just to play it that way with music from the beginning, but because the video is 23 minutes long and we know um, that these days people have such limited attention spans and the artists and what you have to say about your work is really much more of interest than just a video that I created. Um, so we want to lead with the artist talking about their work as we kind of start and stop through the video and then we'll play it through one more time completely at the end for those uh, who want to continue. Um, so like I said, wow, we keep having more and more people log in. This is really exciting. Thank you all so, much. Thank you all so much for joining and uh, being part of this exciting first pop-up exhibition. Uh, we got together with all of the artists and everybody agreed that um, sharing the light was something that we think is really important during this challenging time. And so that's why we named uh, the exhibition Sharing the Light. And it just seemed to make so much sense um, since our focus is always on uplifting art and really bringing joy and richness to people's lives um, through the art uh, that we exhibit. So uh, why don't I go ahead and share my screen and then uh, we'll start the video. And um, Michael, if you can unmute, you're gonna be the, f if, if you are muted, you'll be the first person uh, to be uh, up. So you'll be ready because your work is coming first. Okay. So, all right, perfect. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and play our video. You guys should be able to see my screen now. Yes, yeah. yeah. So you can see this is our entryway. And Michael, if you want to start talking, go ahead. Um, well, for what it's worth, uh, I typically speak about my work insofar as how it's created. Um, what I do is I start with a camera on a tripod about three or four in the afternoon or three or four in the morning. And I continually shoot through either the sunrise or sunset. And what you're looking at is a blend of light from before, during, and after the sunset. And I'm not just using algorithms or, or uh, uh, masking to blend. I'm, I'm using a, what, you know, layer masking or painting with light. Um, the skies in my images never happen in a single moment. They're a blend of, of different skies. Um, you can see the illumination from the, the lights in the windows, but also you can see light falling on the trees from earlier in the day. And so... I'm just trying to incorporate the widest dynamic range of illumination, kind of like painters from past, uh, Rembrandt, Thomas Kincaid, you know, Frederick Edwin Church, Thomas Cole from the Luminism Movement in the 1850s. It's just an extension of that uh, through photography. 
Um, then I reproduce everything either on the G clay canvas or uh, the metallic photo paper encapsulated between the two pieces of acrylic. A lot of people call them face mounts. I like to call the ones I do museum mounts because I do everything by hand. The frames you see there are barn wood I get from a uh, place in Texas that's actual reclaimed barn wood and that design for it, that frame design is something I manufactured myself as well. Everything you see is done with my own two hands and uh, hopefully you would like to see it on your wall. Great, thank you so much, Michael. Can you hear it? Hey. That, yeah, that was great. So um, here I have a, I, I typically show, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, that's okay. Do you want to say a few more words? Well, I was wondering if I could just show us. Can I show my picture on my? Do you, you you want to? No. If you just, I was just going to show how the pic to to. I typically use a visual display where I have a a, a and like this thing in my hand, but uh, you know it's not a big deal. Everybody yeah, kind of I mean, all the artists there knows what I'm talking about. I think. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, okay. has, has Zim logged on by any chance? Okay. Unfortunately, Zim was unable to join us tonight, so I'll have to speak about his work. Um, interestingly, Zim is somebody that I met about a year and a half ago, and he's next, right after Michael's work. Over on the right, you can see. Um, and he is an incredible photographer. He happens to be very shy. And so I think he was, um, you know, not having a bit of stage fright about speaking about his work, but he's just incredibly talented. He takes hours to get the right shot. And this is his work as well, something that I enjoy in my office here at home uh, when it's not on display. And his work is just magical as far as I'm concerned. He did this piece here um, with a piece of glass and he put all of this on top of it and then had a model underneath kind of pressing up so that it would almost look like she was frozen under glass. And to me, I just thought that was absolutely brilliant. Um, and, and it's also beautiful. Um, so these are two of Zim's pieces that we're showing at the exhibition. That's really cool. Yeah. Cool. I wish you were here. I love Zim's work. I know, he's <laughs> phenomenal. All right, Taras, you're going to be next, and we're moving over to your work now. So oh, I'm next. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, we're on live on Zoom, right? So I can speak. And so, uh, I just started shooting three years ago, and uh, my thing with light, personally, it was photography was saved me because uh, I personally was in a dark spot in life, and I grew up with family being creative and photographer, uh, my uncle Taras was a big photographer and, and I just started shooting. And uh, as far as my Im imagery, there's no like, I don't have a process, but because I, I have a general interest in the world around me, um, I have my camera with me all the time, trying to capture something that's interesting or something unique as to that, uh, what's what I'm looking at. Like for example, this is the photo of the bridge. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a bridge here in Torrance. I live in Redondo Beach, California. Um, there's a bridge here in, in Torrance that's the old red car bridge. And the, uh, the angles, no one has ever seen that angle before. Um, it's a nondescript bridge, but uh, you know, it could look like, look like a Roman ruin. And then uh, I, I shot the Anza shot because uh, two years ago during the super bloom out in the desert, I'm born and raised in Southern California and never been to Anza. and wanted to shoot the flowers and I love nature, I love hiking and outdoors. So I took, again, I take my camera with me everywhere. Just to, and for me, it's just about capturing something unique. Uh, well, I'm just telling my story through, through my eyes, through the lens. And um, and is absolutely beautiful place during a bloom and uh, this little oasis, little hike up there. Um, and and, and as I live at the beach, um, the, 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 the Hermosa ramp picture was funny because I was I was going to shoot uh, uh, family photos for a friend of mine. So I, as I was waiting, um, by the way, it was, it was completely cloudy, overcast, typical Southern California, June gloomy day. And then all of a sudden, as I'm waiting, the sun just blew up. And 
So I just started shooting around this uh, lifeguard tower where, where actually I usually play volleyball on Saturday. So, you know, again, I know the light came out and I just got a bunch of great little angles and, uh, you know, it, it's, I live at the beach cause I love the ocean and, uh, this, this, this came out of nowhere. So, you know, put the, I mean, like Michael, like he sets his, he, he has, he has a process, but a lot of times, as, you, as we all know, you know, you gotta be patient because you gotta be sometimes patient with your shots and you get surprised. And, uh, so, you know, my light is just, you never know when the light's going to come. And, uh, you, know, you, you can, you can plan for it, but it's going to come out of nowhere and, uh, surprise you. Thank you so much, Robin. We appreciate it. Uh, John, you're next. Are you on John? Yes. Or oh, Sean or John? Uh, John Kokoza. John, okay. Are you on, John? Okay, so I'll talk about John as well. So we'll keep playing. And uh, Sean, you'll be after him. Okay. So these are Tarasa's images again. And then up in this right corner, we'll see John's image. <laughs> How interesting. <Hello. laughs> I have music going with this video this whole time and it didn't uh it didn't want to connect so <laughs> we, find that we have a bit of surprise music in this area i i apologize if it's going to be distracting we'll have to pause a little more um but anyway john is somebody i've known longer than any of the other artists and uh he took a shot early in the morning he swam off of coronado and snapped this right as the sun was rising um, and so this is a really special uh, that I love. <laughs> to hear you talk about your work okay so sharing the light i think that's obviously works for photography i'm a photographer and we're always it's always about about light um another form of light is my inspiration which is the ocean i think uh the ocean is what i like to capture and it's just it's just an inspiration i feel so at home with the ocean and uh this all started about 12 years ago and the, specifically the last five years I've been focusing on like the shot that you have up right now which is where the camera is partially under the water and partially over the water I use some remote flashes in my other hand to light up the underwater portion in this in this shot of a tide pool in Laguna Beach and I usually do this at sunset uh, this creates a contrast with the darker sky um, this particular shot right here with the sea star this was just when they were coming back there was a virus that was going up and down the California coast and they were disintegrating. You could see them just falling apart. And they were kind of really not around for a few years. And they were just coming back in the shot a few years ago. Uh, really bright, vibrant. It was, it was great to see this, this happening. This was uh, close to Crescent Bay and Laguna Beach. Great. <laughs> it's so startling. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I will say is I'm not a master video editor, so I'm <laughs> as deep as it is. <laughs> That's okay. It's pleasant music. <laughs> he just wants to know if we're awake. Uh, Sean, do you want to talk a bit more about these two pieces here, which we'll look at next? Okay, so yeah, the piece on your left, it's a, a breaking wave at sunset in Laguna Beach. Uh, obviously, I never get tired of, of taking photographs of waves. Uh, this is just inside the barrel just at sunset. Uh, the next one down to the right, you can't quite see in this shot, but it's another shot where the camera is partially over and partially over. And in this case, instead of the tide pool, this is at a beach at Treasure Island, and that is a very small wave, about eight inches tall, swiping from left to right. So the left side is underwater, swiping up over in front of the lens, and the right side is open air. And that's also at sunset. You can kind of see the green of the deeper water at this beach. Uh, and then on the, you see this distortion of the sun and the sky and the water through that thin layer of water on the left side. I create 
these different size acrylic domes that I put in front of the lens. And what that does is it creates a distance between the lens and the water. And the more distance I have, the more kind of clarity I can get. And it's almost like a, a, an aquarium view of the tide pool or a shallow sandy beach while also being able to see any kind of landforms or the sky clouds in the background. It's a very surreal kind of feel. I love your work. I'll never not, the first moment. Oh, thank you, thank you. It. Not visible with the naked eye, but with this with this process, it's kind of this surreal uh, uh, view. Yeah, no question about it. I remember seeing you at the Masters event uh, in Laguna about a year and a half ago, and my jaw just hit the floor. Um, so I'm just so honored that uh, I have the opportunity to work with you. Thank you. I'm hoping that we get to do the Festival of Arts next summer. It was canceled this year, of course. Uh, would have been my seventh year, but I'm looking forward to to next summer. I think it's I think it's going to be back. Absolutely. And thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I read new bread from all the people I see, all the people I spend time. All right, Becky, are you on? Yes, I'm here. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so we will uh, let Becky speak a little bit about her work and then we'll continue playing it as we zoom over it more closely. Sure. Um, so it's encaustics, so beeswax and pigment, and um, over, always striving for achieving translucency and layering so the light can come through. I typically read inspirational writings and when I read, I see images and then I attempt to paint those images. And it's all, for the most part, it's contemporary abstract, it comes out and people find personal meaning, meaning in them. Uh, I do love the ocean, so I do paint water stuff also. Uh, but, um, you know, they each have a meeting, uh, meaning, meaning. Um, I don't have the meaning of the one on the far left, but the, the second one over from the far left um, was just about depth and light coming up through the depth. And then the next one that's horizontal with the gray, gray purple at the bottom. Um, surrender, the idea was um, we all have a pearl deep inside of us. And the idea is sometimes in life we have to dive down to harvest that pearl. Nice. Uh, and then the next painting that's larger is called uh, River of, well, yeah, River of Life. And a friend of mine, it was describing how when he closes his eyes, he actually can see light. So he continued to describe it. So based on his description of his own personal experience of seeing literally light when his eyes are closed, I was making an effort to paint what he was describing, you know, coming like from other worlds, if you will. And then the painting on the right is um, Fertile Ground. And I had a fantastic art teacher in high school who basically, after I took my first class with her, she said, sign up for every class you can with me and don't listen to any directions. Just do whatever you want because you're doing a <laughs> good job. So she really planted a seed in me uh, that only, you know, uh, that you know, uh, bloomed later in my life now. Um, so that's a dedication to her, uh, Fertile Ground is, uh, for her inspiration in my life. And then Love's Cradle, which is the auction piece, um, it has a little heart in the middle. And when I <laughs> got done with it, I realized, well, even, even love wants to be cradled. Mm -hmm. And so there's a rippling effect in it. And that's the, the richness behind that one. Oh, and I love that one. I think that we got a, a good um, capture of the ripple effect that everybody can watch in just a moment. Thank you so much, Becky. Thank you. The week that was canceled my only chance to get out of this place Yeah. 
That's video. beautiful. Okay. Thank you. It looks like it's melting. <laughs> so have you been? I do want to take just a moment to talk about the silent auction. Um, so if you go onto our website, actually on the homepage, you can find a link to the silent auction. It's being done online and um, it's a pretty cool tool where you can enter in your starting bid and your maximum bid and it'll just continually incrementally work by $50 increments up to your maximum bid as people counter bid against it. It's all for um, a wonderful cause. Uh, I was introduced to the Choose Love movement uh, by a mentor of mine, Doug Harrison, and I was just so touched by the story. Um, mom, Scarlett Lewis, lost her six-year-old son in a school shooting, and instead of responding in anger or hate, she created this entire movement to educate people um, about how important it is to choose love and gratitude and forgiveness and kindness. And it just seems, you know, with everything that we see in the news, all the negativity, all of, of the ways that people look to divide one another, um, you know, if we can just focus on forgiveness and love and gratitude and assuming good intention, I think the whole world will be in a better place. And so um, I had recently learned about uh, this nonprofit and then as I was putting the event together, uh, Gretchen was kind enough to mention, you know, we should really do an auction. And it just clicked in my mind that this painting is so perfect um, for the Choose Love movement. And, and that's where it all came together. So Gretchen, thank you for the idea. Becky, thank you for supporting us with the artwork. And um, hopefully we'll, we'll raise some good funds and some great awareness about their movement because I really do think it's honorable. Mm -hmm. I heard about your problems At the end of this road A common solution My favorite thing about you Please don't get me wrong All right. Julieta, we would love for you to uh, talk about your work and Luana, thank you for joining and being our translator tonight. Hi, good night. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Julieta, would you like to share about this in Spanish? Yes. Can you hear? We can. Okay. Oh. So I, I will speak in Spanish about my work. Perfect. Okay. Can you see me? Because I don't see you. Yes, we can see you and hear you. Ok. Well, uh, voy a hablar en español porque es un poco más fácil platicarles un poco de mi camino a través del arte que empezó hace 15 años realmente ya como profesión y que he venido experimentando grandes satisfacciones a través del color porque el color es mi pasión y siento como, un, como que es una danza por la que voy caminando y llego hacia lo que logro. El color me inspira y me llena de, de pasión. Eh, um, las obras Julieta, que tengo... Julieta, dime. If, you'll, if you'll let Luana translate that before you continue. Okay. Okay, so Julieta started her journey 50 years ago. And she has been um, working with colors that, what, that it's what um, moved her to paint. And um, that's how she expressed her feelings. So... Yeah. Eh, sí, Julieta. <risas> eh, les decía que mi camino a través del arte ya, ya se consagró, se consolidó hace 15 años. He venido pasando por diferentes este, prácticas y talleres a través de muchos maestros. He visitado algunos países, he tomado clases y he estado muy contenta de mi participación que se ha dado en diferentes partes como en México y en, otras, y en otros lados. Y he llevado mi, mi trabajo a, a varios lugares y hoy estoy participando con mucho gusto en esta exposición. Y este, no sé si quieras que describa un poco el trabajo que hoy presento. Ok, so she has been practicing a lot all these five, 15 years and going through all the world with her art and, ex and exhibiting it to all around the world, Mexico and other parts and learning from everything that she has been um, 
experimenting. Perfect. Thank you, Julieta. Thank you, Luana. I'm going to play this now so we can see a bit of your work. And she's really happy to form right now, part of this. Oh, um, we're thrilled to have you. <laughs> I'm in love with your work. So she can see it. That's why All right, Julieta, did you want to say any final words before we move on to Brenda? Sí, quería preguntar si yo cre yo quería ver mi obra expuesta y hablarles un poco de ella, pero no no veo más que las personas que están enfrente de mí. Okay. No sé cómo. Um, so, um, can you can you help her with um, this one is in Spanish? We peak. Okay, estamos en la de um, nos asomamos. Make me more nervous than I am. Okay. Bueno. En esta, en esta obra de Nos Asumamos, yo estoy invitando a reflexionar sobre la vida y los tonos que tenemos, que es el azul bebé, eh, nos representan el cielo que nos ilumina y todos los caminos que nosotros caminamos. Y todas las figuras abstractas son compañeras que, que irradian un tono amarillo trigo y que son parte de, de la composición. Okay, so in this artwork, um, we are invited to reflect on life, to, to think on what it's like. And the colors on baby blue um, are the illuminations of the paths that we walk. And the abstract figures are um, the companions of um, what it's yellow and um, radiating and illumination. Thank you, Luana. Great job translating. I, I'm so <laughs> appreciative of you. Thank you. Uh, so the next one here uh, is poses. Yes. And yes. you'd like to speak about that? Yes, of course. Eh, las poses son como circunstancias de la vida que varían mucho. Y son las poses que nosotros asumimos en cada situación que vamos pasando. Y están representadas en un tonos naranjas y, y vibrantes, ¿verdad? Que, que cada una de ellas es para ver qué poses adoptas tú en la vida, cómo te atreves. Ok, so in our life we adopt different poses in which we make. Um, um, in fact, of what um, decisions we make in our life or what the um, things we take in our life. So it's how you make a pose depending on how you react to different things in life. And it's um, represented in orange and vibrant colors. Cool, I love that. Five minutes without talking. So if you'd like to speak about uh, La Piedad and uh, Seres de Luz. Yes. Estas dos obras están, uh, se, puede, se puede pensar que están hechas para que se sigan una con la otra. En ellas se siente como les se toca, están tocadas por la luz y están llena, llenas de comunicación. Es uno de los actos de amor más importantes de los seres humanos ya que si hay comunicación entendemos mucho. A mí me recuerda, si se fijan en la de la piedad, que es la segunda, se, me, me recuerda lo que es la, la piedad de, de Miguel Ángel, o sea, la forma de cómo está cargando a, a Cristo. Entonces es un acto de piedad, es un acto de amor, es un acto de luz y, y, y nos, nos, da, nos, nos, nos enseña las cosas bellas de la vida. Okay, so these two um, art, piece, art pieces are talking about communication and about love. 
because without communication, um, there's nothing. So it's really important. And the first um, artwork that it's shown in the left hand, it's called La Piedad. And it's talking about Miguel Angel, about holding. Um, and it's Piedad. <laughs> and Piedad means piety in English. And yeah. Ceres de Luz, it means beings of light. Um, and there are actually two different um, beings of light uh, paintings. We're exhibiting one of them, but there are actually these two here plus one more. So, if, and they're all the same size. So if you had um, a space that you would want to, you know, display three of them, they would actually go really well together. Yes. Perfect. Okay, great. So um, Julieta, Luana, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to move on to Brenda. <laughs> Brenda, let's, let's hear about your work, which looks amazing in this environment. Well, thank you. Um, well, the uh, Geomorphic Abstraction Series is about the importance of digging deeper and seeing beyond the superficial. Um, the, the minerals that inspire my work, I have this very large collection of gemstones and minerals. They, um, they're often hidden inside a matrix of very dull gray stone, and it's not really apparent of the, that the, there's this beauty inside. And it isn't until what's inside is revealed and polished that their true beauty shows. Um, by sharing the light of these stunning aspects of our Mother Earth, I, I hope to express the inward significance of our true selves. Um, human beings are very visual creatures and it is our nature to make judgments based on outward appearances. That's great, thank you. I wanna point out that these two are originals, oil on canvas. This is a true life acrylic print. So as we zoom in and you see how um, the light is reflected more on this one, be aware that the, the original is also available. Brenda just happens to be exhibiting elsewhere. Um, so she is spread thin and I was awfully glad that I had this print, um, which actually I've been enjoying in my office and uh, it inspires me <laughs> on a daily basis. Brenda's work, she scanned all of it. So it's available both as originals and prints. We have the ability to print on a variety of different substrates to accomplish. That's right. They're also, they were scanned at very high resolution. So um, half of my pieces could actually be printed as huge murals, like 30 foot murals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you could do it in, you know, like in wallpaper that you know, turns into a mural. You can do paper, uh, archival paper that's framed and matted, mm -hmm. uh, acrylic, HD metal, you know, so many different options, so many different sizes, depending on budget and what your home is like. And that really goes um, for most of the photography as well. Um, it's been done in really, really high resolution. So it can be um, printed in many different sizes and on many different substrates depending on what look you prefer and what budgetary uh, goals you have. We can pretty much accomplish anything. Did you want me to talk about the individual paintings? So yeah, um, I wanted to just zoom in a little bit and uh, let Carla uh, begin to talk. These four pieces are Carla's, and then we're going to turn around and take a look at two more by her. Um, so Carla, thank you for joining. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, all right, so these pieces right here, um, 
there's a story behind them. I remember as a kid, uh, my parents used to listen to a lot of different music and for some reason, the Beach Boys, Beach Boys and Rod Stewart always um, like stand out. And I associate that with like happy memories and uh, like an upbeat feeling, um, you know, because they used to play that music when we went on camping trips and then when we went to the beach and we went, it was, it was just filled with fun. So uh, with the pandemic, I kind of wanted to um, kind of go back to that little bubble, little space of just joy. So um, it's a collection called Good Vibrations um, after one of the Beach Boy songs. And they're just little snapshots of like happy memories, like old ones, by, but also like newly created ones with my friends and family. And uh, there was such a joy to create. I love using uh, vibrant colors, as you can see. Um, and they're just, just fun. Just fun. I, I love those pieces. And they, they each have their own individual story. And uh, they're just memories of happy moments. I, I love each and every one of them. And we're just displaying a few. Uh, but Carla has, I think, a total of eight or nine. Uh, well, actually, it's a total of initially like 12 by 12. They're nine. But I think I'm going to follow through with more paintings because I just love the concept of creating out of happiness. Yeah. So I'm going to continue. <laughs> That's I'm going to continue with that. And each of these little snippets of joy is only uh, $275. You can mix and match them. They have beautiful frames that uh, they already come with. And so to me, these are just um, absolutely fun. So let's go ahead and play, look at them a little more closely, and then we'll look at two more works by you. All right. That one is Summer Breeze. That one is called Dancing in the Snow. Ocean Breeze. <clears throat> that one's called Friendship. Give me an angle that I haven't tried before. Great. All right, so let me start to the one to the right. That one is called Isolation Summary. And that one, when the pandemic hit, that's the first painting I did. Um, my, my daughter plays piano and she plays beautifully and she plays classical music. And I've been, since she's been home to, you know, homeschool, I've been listening to, you know, her playing piano and you know, she's been playing Autumn Leaves and Clear the Loon, so I decided to incorporate the music sheets in the painting. And I also stained some of them with coffee grounds. So that's what I used to wrap the edges to give it more like a vintage feel. And it's just a fun and positive painting. I, I love it. It's, I love it's it just too. positive. If you, if, for anyone who can come on site, uh, I encourage you to come on site because really seeing the music sheets wrapped around the edges, it really takes it to the next level. I don't know, I don't think I captured it properly in the video, but it, it has a lot of impact and it just so much soul and, and uh, happiness and peace to it. Yeah, th there's a lot to see in that painting <laughs> up close, for sure. sure. And then, okay, so the, the one to the left is called the Joyful Elephant. Um, I remember learning about the plight of the elephant a while ago, and it really saddened me how they're, uh, they're just, they're being killed for the ivory and how they, um, they have to walk miles and miles just to get food and water due to climate change, that I really wanted to portray the elephant like in a joyful and strong and mesmerizing way, just give it a beautiful light. Um, I love, I love elephants. Uh, they're such noble creatures and they have a big sense of community. That's, I think that's, the, that's one of the main reasons I, I love the elephants so much because they're willing to help each other. So um, I, I hope I did justice to, to that creature. Oh, I think you did. We already have somebody who's ooing and aahing over it. His wife is from South Africa. Oh, wow. He thinks that they are going to want to purchase this one. So um, 
Awesome. I, I'm, I know it's already connecting with people. Oh, that's great. Guarantee for being honestly compared. You want to live when life is aching the unfair. Thank you so much, Carla. We really appreciate your work. Thank you. On. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Gretchen, are you logged on? I am. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. It's good to see you. Hi. It's good to see you too. Great job. This looks wonderful. Oh, thank you. It's even better in person. I'm sure. Well, great. We'd love to have you talk a little bit about your work before we kind of zoom in and look at them more closely. Sure. Um, this is my It Could Be You collection. I am a Southern California muralist, canvas painter, and licensed artist. I work between New York and California, and I moved out to San Diego in 2014 to pursue my career as a full-time artist. This collection is completely reflective of my journey to Southern California. I use all local muses, so they're women that um, give me their photos, and I I'm able to use them as inspiration. Each woman in the painting uh, will tell me their story about a journey that they've been through, a life journey, where they found hope or inspiration or peace of mind. And that story then becomes the reflection in the sunglasses. The goal is to sort of reinvent the landscape painting so that it's not just a landscape and brings a human connection to a place in Southern California. Um, if you look at the piece on the bottom right, that's Julia, for instance, she moved from New York City to Los Angeles, so Hollywood became her reflection, escaping a challenging relationship and finding her own independence in uh, Los Angeles. I try to represent a diverse um, women so that everybody's beauty is represented equally, and um, I think a lot of women find themselves in these portrait paintings because once you put sunglasses onto a portrait, I find it becomes ambiguous. So I've had women from all over the country um, order these from me because they see themselves within these pieces, whether they're relating to a skin tone or hair color um, or the, even just the reflection of the place. Yeah, these are so fun. Um, I absolutely love them. I wish everybody could see them in person. Um, you know, Balboa in particular, her skin is so luminous and I love that the lighting is actually really good on this. So you can actually see the brown in her hair. Um, and, you know, each one of them speaks to me in a different way. I absolutely love your work. Um, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for logging on and participating and I'm gonna go ahead and play so we can zoom in closer. Sure. Shadow interest, but it's easy to pretend. Don't start the action, it will turn against you soon. No one's gonna follow, and you'll stand there like a fool. The show looks amazing, by the way. Oh, thank you. It's so fun to see it in real life. <laughs> well, we'd love to hear a bit about you and your work before we zoom in closer. Okay. I'm from San Diego, and I teach art classes, and I'm an artist, obviously, a mixed media artist, and I also uh, do some pieces that are just straight collage without the other mediums uh, in there. And I do uh, focus a lot on the female as a, a kind of like a positive character in each piece. And each piece does tell a story, 
but I generally don't like to uh, tell too much. I kind of, I feel it's more important for each viewer to decide what that piece means to them as an individual um, through finding meaning in the symbolism of the pieces through their own experience, through their life journey. Um, it, but each piece does have a different meaning to me as well, but I just, I don't know. I kind of like to leave it up to the viewer. I think it's more interesting that way. Yes, I, I love your work. And I think this piece here on a skateboard is just amazing. I love the 80s vibe to it. Um, this piece, you may not be able to tell, but it is 3D. There are pieces that stick out. And so as we zoom in, take a close look uh, at what you see. Ginger. Yeah, thank you. Okay, wonderful. Rosario, are you on? Sí, aquí estoy. I, I'm here, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, good evening. Yeah, I'm here. So Rosario um, actually speaks English pretty darn well, but she doesn't give herself credit for it, so she's <laughs> going to speak in Spanish and have Luana translate for her. Well, I think it's easier to talk about your own work when you do it in your own language. That so, perfect. But, <laughs> By the way, you look lovely tonight. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank so you. Luana, are you on as well, ready to translate? Yeah. Perfect, great. Right. Gracias, Luana. <laughs> bueno, eh, soy mexicana, soy artista visual eh, mexicana, pero radico en San Diego desde hace, no sé, 20 años. Y me dedico a la pintura hace unos cinco años y profesionalmente hace dos años. Eh, mi acercamiento con la pintura fue porque viví una experiencia traumática en mi vida que me ha servido como terapia para poder entender esta experiencia. Y particularmente aquí en esta exhibición presento tres, tres colecciones o series bueno, no sé si quieras traducirlo, Ana. Sí, sí voy a traducir. Este, so, Rosario, it's original, originally from Mexico, Tijuana. And she moved to San Diego in 2005 um, with her two sons and her granddaughter. And um, she started painting because she had a traumatic um, event. So she started painting as a therapy and been um, painting since, since then. And right, she's presenting um, these art pieces. Yeah, and so I don't think the video goes in the order that you created these um, three bodies of work. Uh -huh. well, why don't we play a little bit? And then so you can first talk about the abstract, abstract trees, and then mm -hmm. we'll move over to the other side and you can talk about the other bodies of work. Okay. Bueno, las series que yo he estado haciendo son como consecuencia de este evento traumático y las he creado para entender el proceso, ¿no? Ha sido como mi proceso de entender. Esta es, digamos, la tercera serie que hice. Eh, es una serie con la que he estado trabajando por más de un año, un año y medio, y que quiero continuar, ¿no? Todo empezó, esta serie se llama eh, Grounding, que es un... Son, uh, pues, como estrategias que dan eh, terapéuticas para olvidarte de los procesos o de los eventos difíciles y te enfoques en cosas positivas. Yo lo quise hacer representándolo con árboles o son mis bosques abstractos, 
porque también los árboles para mí, esas raíces profundas que, que tienen, eh, pues les permiten mantenerse en pie, ¿no? Entonces es lo que yo he estado intentando hacer con mi vida, eh, pues seguir eh, estando en pie. Entonces, estos son, eh, son técnicas mixtas en acrílicos e, y, y texturas. Eh, I don't know if you want to continue, or Luana, if you want okay, to continue. So, Sorry. <laughs> see, this concept was based on therapy that she had. So, um, to, um, based on the event that she had and to detach from emotional pain and help her focus on the difficult emotions that she was passing. And tying this to nature, to nature was natural since grounding is meant to reconnect you with earth. So she wanted to paint the um, trees in a way to reconnect with um, planet earth and to herself. Perfect, so let's go ahead and play and then we'll Look at the other side and talk about that a bit too. Estas mujeres que tienen, bueno, no se les ven los ojos, se ve nada más eh, parte del rostro. Está esa y un poco a la derecha está otra. Y esta pertenece a, una, a la colección que se llama El Poder de los Pensamientos. Y la idea que yo presento aquí es la habilidad que tenemos como seres humanos que está en nosotros el cambiar la, los la manera de pensar, ¿no? Porque podemos tener pensamientos o positivos o negativos y, pues, bueno, yo los intento que sean positivos y los represento con flores y mariposas. Eh, entonces, pues, esa, esa serie está basada en, en, esa, en esa idea, ¿no? De, de llevar esos pensamientos negativos a algo positivo. Ok, so this series are power of thought series called and they are half painted and they are, the faces are half finished so the expecta spectator can discover the souls of each um, painting and she wanted to paint women because they play many roles as strength naive and tenderness and the flowers in this case in this um, painting are symbolizing the ability to turn the, ne the negative negative feelings into positive ones when they, um, when the difficulty arises. Perfect. Esta eh, obra es parte de una serie que se llama Moving On, porque como les comenté, bueno, toda mi pintura es este proceso que yo he tenido con, con esta nueva realidad. Entonces, ya que mis pensamientos se hicieron un poco positivos y que estructuré un poco mi vida, eh, pues decidí que tenía que seguir adelante. Y entonces, eh, es una serie de varias obras que hice con ese, basadas en ese concepto, ¿no? Y pues bueno, las ruedas son porque, pues es una sensación de seguir adelante. Entonces... Eh, básicamente esa serie fue abstracta y pues bueno, es, es parte de, de ella. Ok, so after the event that um, Rosario passed, she selected a calm color palette to convey the calm and determination as she moved into her life. And um, this series is abstract. And yeah. Perfect. Luana and Rosario, thank you both so much. Um, thank you. Back. Thank you, Luana. You're welcome. No, you're okay. That's it.
Okay, so Yandi is uh, Luana's father. Hola. And, uh, I'm thrilled that he was uh, made the effort to ship these up from Cabo San Lucas um, and that he's part of the gallery now. Um, I'm very, very grateful that Alvaro introduced us when I was last in Cabo. So I'm thrilled to hear you talk about your, your work. Uh, hi, uh, hola. Um, bueno. Uh, I was born in Uruguay. We are speaking English. My speaking English is very true. <laughs> and be living in Cabo. Uh, in Cabo is actually my studio. Y Luana va a ser mi traslaire. Ya speak in Spanish. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so he was born in Uruguay and moved in Cabo um, a long time ago. So his studio is right now here in Cabo and all his pieces are um, based on Baja and Mexico and colors of the sunsets, sunrises, um, ocean, mountains, like as you, I don't know if you know Cabo, but there's like a, a mix of different um, um, geographies. You have ocean, you have cactus, you have mountains, you have this desert. So he tries to make all those um, different landscapes into his artwork. Y este trabajo que estoy presentando ahora es un trabajo en técnica mixta, es en lámina de acetato, está pintado por detrás, I think in reverse, y, y su efecto es el que tú ves por el lado de adelante. Eh, me gusta el trazo primitivo, la primera intención y el reflejo de la luz que se da en el agua y en el desierto de Baja California. La luz de Cabo es, es, es muy interesante, eh, el mar, el azul que vemos es magnífico y, y tiene esa sensación, te da una sensación de vitalidad para aquel que viene a Baja California y eso trato yo también de alguna manera eh, de transmitirlo con estas técnicas. Ok, so this is a technique that he um, works a lot because he's the only artist that manages it. So um, it's, a, it's a technique that it's called um, with la, um, acetate laminate and it's painted on the back and it reflects in the front. So actually what you see, it's what's in the, in the front, not what, it's, what was painted. Um, and he, in this um, three pieces, he wanted to um, share how the, the water and the lights of um, Cabo are shown. And yeah. Yeah, yeah they're tiny. Yes. Oh, and he's. Um, Materials. He's. I saw the spray. The way he paints, it's like more primitive. He likes to manage um, abstract a lot. And he used mixed technique um, oil, acrylic, different materials. Yeah, so when uh, my husband and I were down in Cabo, they were explaining to me that he sets it up and then paints the reverse and then comes around and, and, and gets the full impact uh, after, which to me is amazing. I mean, to get your mind to paint in reverse um, is mind boggling. I can't, uh, I can't paint from the front side, let alone the back. So I was very impressed with that technique. Yeah, he's always like painting and watching or actually a, a, um, a lot of times he, he paints and after gets the impression, like, so he doesn't know what's gonna happen after. So really? that's the magic of all this technique. Um, and, and this is, uh, the series is titled Pacifico Sur, one, two, and three, which means um, the South Pacific one, two, and three. Um, and, and they're absolutely beautiful. Um, and I encourage everybody uh, to see them in person. So thank you so much, uh, Yandi, for making the, the big effort to get them up here and uh, for sharing. And thank you as well, Luana, for translating. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you, Aleta. <laughs>
Okay, Scott, I think I saw your name here. Are you on? Uh, yeah, I'm on. Wonderful, cool. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm delighted to have you on and uh, you'll, you'll notice that we have three of your bigger works up and then a bunch of small little framed pieces up. So you're going to have quite a bit to talk about. <laughs> uh, well, not really. Um, I really don't like to talk too much about my work, but um, yeah, I'm a local photographer. Um, been in San Diego for 28 years. Uh, a little bit about this piece. Uh, I shoot a lot in downtown and I feel like downtown in San Diego, it's kind of unnoticed. Uh, when people think of downtown, they think of, you know, the gas lamp, bars, clubs, um, you know, other things like that. So for me, um, when I photograph downtown, I like to capture the energy. Uh, I pretty much want our downtown to feel like it would rival Chicago or New York. I feel like that the architecture down there, uh, the buildings, everything from, you know, the East Village District to Gas Lamp, um, it's up and coming. And I work with a lot of commercial real estate companies and I just want to show that, yeah, it's dynamic. Um, you know, it's, it's a beautiful downtown. There's lots to see other than just going down there for a drink or to see a ball game. So definitely. Thank you, Scott. So I'm going to play this and I want you to look closely. This is printed in HD metal. And then over on the right, uh, we did some sample prints just to make sure that Scott was happy with the colors uh, with the printer that we were working with. And since I have these little six by four sample prints and uh, Alejandra and Manuel were kind enough to introduce me to a really great framer down in Tijuana. Um, that's, you know, like half of the price of getting uh, the same level quality framing in San Diego. I took all of Scott's little paper G clay prints down there and had them framed and matted as examples of different ways to frame and mat things to really show how they pop. So I think it's cool to look at this both in HD metal and framed as a paper sheet clay to kind of see what connects the most with you and how it brings out different elements. So let's take a look. Do you want to share where this was taken, Scott? Uh, this was taken in Balboa Park at the Japanese Friendship Garden. Perfect. And we'll see another one in just a minute um, as we turn around that has more of these beautiful pink uh, cherry blossom trees also taken, I think, on that same day. Yeah. You want to share where this was taken? I give out my secrets? No, okay, no secrets. Uh, it's a joke. North County, San Diego. <laughs> uh, no, it was taken in uh, Carlsbad, off the 101. <laughs> I love this. I do want to point out to you guys, this is the one of Scott's that I had framed with UV glass. All of the others I used museum glass. And so you'll notice with all the others, there are no reflections. And I really wanted to, you know, kind of show, because there is a little bit of a price point difference, but if you want a paper G clay framed with no glare at all, you want to go with museum glass. Um, so Scott, these next two uh, are of the ballpark. Do you want to talk a little bit about our ballpark? And, and I know you've taken a lot of images uh, of the ballpark and from different angles. Uh, yeah, I mean, just again, capturing downtown. Um, I try to capture views that are unique to San Diego that most people haven't seen. Um, and most of these are on rooftops, uh, places that most people, they don't have public access. So just to try to show them the views um, of downtown that are rarely seen. And most of these, these are not ground level these are usually um, high rise um, spots that kind of just show, um, you know, the entire city. 
I, after looking at so many of Scott's gorgeous images, I've started to call him Batman because he is always at the top of buildings capturing this view that nobody else captures. And I just love it. So thank you for sharing that imagery with us. titled um, Spring Tide in La Jolla. Is that right, Scott? Uh, yeah, this was taken out Wind and Sea, which I'm sure all the photographers here know about because they probably photographed there or they're aware of it for its natural beauty. Absolutely. Um, for yeah. me, I love the contrast of the homes with the green moss and the foamy water. This one, you know, I drool over all the time. And you'll see this. Uh, this is an HD metal print. And you'll also see it on the other wall as a framed paper sheet clay as well. I have been there, so I am there now. You knew what you wanted and you fought so hard. is in acrylic. And so Scott, I'd love to hear you talk about this one as well. Um, again, it's just showing, you know, all my photos, they, I rarely ever include people in them. I feel like people kind of distract from the actual environment, the background. And again, it's just showing the natural beauty of San Diego. As a local, someone who loves it, um, you know, if you've ever been to this spa, which I'm sure most people have in Coronado, you know, it's full of people and traffic, noise. And so it's, again, just trying to capture it at a time with that very few people see, um, a time of day that most people would be sleeping. Um, but again, just to show the natural beauty of San Diego, so. And, and this is looking um, back east. So this is the sun rise coming up under the bridge, which is stunning. I, I have certainly never seen the bridge at that time with that angle. Thank you. here and make sure that everybody sees the coaster zooming by. I, I'm going to speak to this one myself because I love the contrast of the piece of the coastline and how the sun lights up the bridge and then just that zooming coaster train and having it framed and matted with this blue, it just, that matches the train, you know, for me, I look at this every day in my office and um, absolutely love it. Yeah, I think, um, you know, if you're ever a photographer in San Diego, you like to take photos, you know, San Diego kind of has this one palette, which is kind of this brown sand, um, 
dry. So I always tell people, I'm like, you know, if you really want a photo in San Diego to be stunning, try to take colors of green, red, um, you know, colors that most people that are not native to San Diego. And there's only certain times a year which you can capture those. And so I think that if you can try to get those in your photos, um, it would definitely make them pop or just makes those shots stand out more. Totally. But yeah, but. I missed you and I miss you back. Thank you so much, Scott. I appreciate it. I know you don't like to talk and it means a lot to me that you made the effort to join us tonight and share about all your work. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thanks. Okay, so Lee is up next. Are you on, Lee? I thought I saw Lee join earlier. Um, hopefully he's not uh, just muted, but I will, I will stand in for him. Uh, so we have four pieces by Lee here. The one on the left is printed in acrylic. And then the three on the right are all paper she clays that have been uh, matted, or excuse me, not matted, but framed. Um, so you can see with um, Scott's, we took the extra effort and, and expense of, of not just framing, but matting. But there is a less expensive option that you can do. You can actually print white space um, around the actual um, image and then just frame it. So depending again on budget, there's lots of different things that we can do to accomplish goals um, and still have them look really nice. Um, Lee's a great photographer. He has a lot of stunning imagery um, and we're thrilled. He's one of our uh, newest artists. So I'll go ahead and play this now. Each lover was made to sign. Now I hear them calling me. Staying in a villa and his boat would uh, ride up to it. Yes, we are. Excellent. I'm thrilled to have you here and think your work looks gorgeous uh, presented in the, in the way that it's presented. Thank you so much for participating in this and being part of our community. Thank you for the, this invitation. And we are so happy to, to be here right now from our home studio in Tijuana. And would you like me to talk about my work? Please. Well, I, I, I use some um, acrylic and acrylic paints, uh, inks. Uh, I mix so many things, sprays, uh, oil pastel, but mostly acrylic paints, some resins and water base. And my themes always are related. I'm trying to speak in English, but Manuel is here just to help me because sometimes it's uh, hard for me, but I will try to do it. Um, my uh, my primary intention. Yes, is to. to is the later the spectator. He wanted me to say that his first intention when he paints is to delight the spectator. Um, I know the title of the exhibition is 
great for to apply in my work because it's sharing the light. I want to share my light, my light of my colors, my light or the way I paint to all the people to enrich their soul. Inner, inner soul. Inner soul. And, and another very important thing is try to evoke um, organic um, uh, espacios organicos, uh, paisajes organicos. Organic spaces. Or, yes, because um, I want people to create more conscience. consciousness. Consciousness. No, I can Consciousness. <laughs> to um, have more respect to the environment because we are living in a, a terrible time. We can see, like, an example this situation we're living uh, right now with this pandemic is because. We um, tratamos muy mal. You neglected. We, he, he thinks we humans neglected our planet. That's the reason why uh, this pandemic is a result of a scream from nature to let them be free and to let it grow naturally. That's why the, um, my way to paint is with very organic elements just to, uh, like I said, to evoke the uh, natural uh, spaces, uh, you can feel the light, the light we have every day. The light is like a, in the jungle, like the piece uh, in the middle. Uh, the title is The Jungle. And I, and I can imagine all the colors, all the lights are in the jungles because um, in the jungles, the humans are not, todavía no están dentro. Yeah, when the jungle is still uh, like virgin, virgin, with no no people invading, so it's still so green and beautiful. Green and a lot of colors, uh, you know. Um, and like the first one, the name is uh, Renacer Organic. Organic. Organic uh, rebirth. Because every day, todos los días es una nueva una nueva oportunidad de renacer. Every day for Alejandro is a new opportunity to rebirth in life and let nature and the environment and the planet grow naturally without the impact of, of humans and on Earth. Another example is the last painting, and um, it names is Cocoons. Cocoons. Cocoons, because um, es cuando va a dar vida. Yeah, he, he considers a cocoon. There's life inside until it breaks down and it comes out from the cocoon. And it's a new life, a new uh, light in this world. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my way to paint and my thinking. And I really enjoy so much to use a lot of colors because there's a good element to poder. Atrapar la atención del espectador. Yeah, with this painting, he's like, it's, he uses with all these elements to capture the attention of the spectators. And tratar de transmitir el mensaje y lo puedan captar. And yeah, he wants to transmit a, a message to the people to be conscious and responsible about Earth. And I, I think as a translator, I'm fired. I'll be <laughs> that. <laughs> it, doing a phenomenal job. <laughs> it, um, and I think when the spectator got my message or they can feel is something alive, um, we create the empathy of the, the triangle, empathy triangle. between the artist, the artwork, and the spectator. Um, que ellos forman parte de la creación con su, mental, su imaginación de lo que están sintiendo y viendo. Uh, the moment the spectator uh, connects to the painting and gets in contact with the artist, he becomes part of the creation of art to light. ¿Cómo era el título para la luz de qué? La luz de un nuevo día. They are sharing the light. To share the light of the painting. And Alejandro's thinking. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. And once thank again, thank you very much. Alejandro, I've never heard you speak so much in English. I'm so <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and I just want to say your home looks spectacular. Uh, and everybody, I, Aaron and I were so honored. Uh, we went to visit them and I was immediately jealous. They have this panoramic view that goes all the way to Coronado and it's just a spectacular home with all of Alejandro's work displayed beautifully. Um, and so I can just almost feel myself there seeing it in the background. So thank you so much for joining. You're more than welcome and everybody else too. Thank you. Thank well, you. why don't I play and zoom in uh, so we can take a closer look at your work and I just think your message is so beautiful. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you. I just also want to compliment Manuel. Um, he does all of the framing and matting, and I had to zoom in so close because somehow they managed to elevate uh, the paper that Alejandro uh, painted on, and so it's it's floating inside the linen matting. It's absolutely stunning. Um, so I'm glad the video captured it properly. Thank you, Alita. Nice work. Salud. Ah, uh, salute. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> mm. Okay, Rebecca, you're next. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, That's well, uh, I'm... Beautiful works, and we look forward to learning about you and, and what we're exhibiting. Thank you. Well, I'm Rebecca Martinez. I'm from Monterey, Mexico. Um, I'm going to ask Luana to help me to translate because my English is so, so, <laughs> so, um, I'm going to talk about first about, uh, me a little bit. Um, desde que tenía nueve años, empecé a pintar. Mi papá desde muy chiquita me empujó a tomar clases de adultos. Este, porque siempre estuve muy familiarizada con la pintura porque mi abuela pintaba, mis tías, mi papá y, y por eso estoy muy agradecida con él por haberme empujado okay, a, so a tomar todos sus talleres. Since she was nine years old, she was very um, involved, involved in what's art and her dad always um, impulsed her to paint and make her be in art classes and um, always push her to paint. So that's why she's really um, grateful to him to push her to paint and create. Desde muy chiquita jugaba con, con combinar colores. Me encantan las texturas, las transparencias este, y lo que pasa al combinar todas estas cosas. Okay, so hacen que, que se, hace que se transformen eh, las obras de una manera sin límite. Okay, so she always likes to um, match colors 
and she's fascinated by texture, transparencies, colors, and what happens when she mixes them. It's what she likes and how they transform in limitless ways. Me considero una persona que sigue en, en evolución, que sigue en crecimiento. Siempre he tomado talleres de diferentes técnicas y continúo buscando eh, aprender cosas nuevas siempre, fusionándolas con las cosas que he aprendido desde, desde que tenía nueve años. So she has been taking many workshops um, with different techniques with great masters and she considers, she considers herself um, a person in full of evolution, merging and learning things from yesterday and today. He tenido la oportunidad de poder exponer en San Diego, en Tijuana, en Londres, este, hace un par de semanas en Budapest. Y, sí, y, y continúo buscando exhibir mi obra para tratar de transmitir en todo el mundo lo que, lo que hago. Ok, so she has been fortunate to um, exhibit in Tijuana, San Diego, um, London, en Budapest, until now. And she, also, she always likes to express how important it is to um, share the light to people around. Voy a hablar de la obra que estamos viendo ahorita, que se llama Despertando. Quise transmitir el renacimiento de la mujer, donde finalmente puede expresarse sin miedo, pudiendo compartir la luz que en ella dormía, formando una melodía en la que la hace bailar y disfrutar un poco más de la vida. Okay, so this um, art piece that she's talking about, it's called Despertando, which it's translated to Awakening. And she wanted to convey the, the rebirth of woman, where it's expressing the, herself without fear and sharing the light in a way that you can dance and enjoy your life more. And I just want to interject here. This piece is so beautiful in person. And it's truly a value. Um, it's a huge work. Mm -hmm. It's 86 inches long and 47 inches high. So it's definitely a statement piece, but with the neutral tones that it has, it's not overpowering. And this artwork, I mean, honestly, it's a steal for anybody. If I didn't already have a piece over my uh, couch, I would take it. My husband also said he wanted to buy it, um, but it's only 31.75. Uh, so about $3,200. So for me, you know, I, I just think this is like one, one of the most amazing values and somebody should snap this up. I'm absolutely in love with this artwork. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, let's take a quick look at it and then we'll look at your next one and you could talk a bit more about it. Okay. Ok, en esta, esta obra se llama Contra Todo. Viene de una serie que hice, tengo dos años en, haciendo lo que se llama Entre Líneas. Um, aquí trato de expresar lo importante que es estar unidos como humanidad, ayudándonos el uno al otro y compartiendo lo que cada uno tiene que dar para ofrecer, para unir fuerzas y combatir cualquier reto. Okay, so this artwork, um, it's called Contra Todo, in translated, it's against all. And it's the importance to help each other, sharing what's, um, what each one has to offer the world, to join forces and fight 
any challenge and the importance to be um, united as a humanity. Thank you Thank for you. helping me to trust it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank excited um, to hear from uh, Alvaro Blancarte tonight. Uh, Alvaro is such an esteemed artist. Um, he's in the permanent, uh, one of his works is in the permanent art collection of the Museum of Contemporary Art San Diego. And I'm just so honored um, that he saw something special in me and believes in my vision and uh, has, has decided to be part of our community. Um, I went to visit him uh, in Tecate with my husband months ago, and he insisted on sending me home with these pieces. And so I've been enjoying them in my home for months, feeling, you know, just so lucky to have them there. And I can't wait to zoom in on them more and show um, all, of, all of the texture. Um, but Alvaro, we're excited to hear from you. Uh... <clears throat> Aleta y Arlita, estoy muy contento de estar contigo y con, tu, y con tu compañía, que para mí tiene un gran futuro, porque lo estás trabajando maravillosamente. Me da mucho gusto estar con ustedes. Felicito a todos los participantes de ahorita que he estado viendo. Yo creo que la mejor intención en el arte es esa precisamente intentar hacerlo, intentar encontrarlo, ¿verdad? Yo me voy a permitir decir dos frases para comenzar. So, my, first of all, my grandfather wishes to say that he's very excited to be here. He wants to thank you, Alita, for the invitation, and he also mentions that he believes in your project and that this project will give a uh, the best uh, of it all in the future, and it's doing it now as well. Um, he's also mentioning that he's been in love with what he's been seeing so far. Um, he believes that art is that, uh, art is all about uh, making it happen. And he's very happy to see that all of you are making it happen. And he would like to start this presentation with two phrases. Comenzaré mi plática con una frase que yo digo, con la que defino el arte. El arte es una enfermedad de sensibilidad para la cual no hay vacuna. Qué bueno que habemos aquí varios enfermos y esperemos que cada día haya más en el mundo para que este mundo se componga. So the first phrase he is saying is that art is a disease for which there, for which there is no vaccine and that he's very happy to see a lot of people this night that currently are suffering from this disease because these people are the ones that are going to make the world change. Eh, segundo, o tercero, eh, es muy importante este regreso mío a Los Ángeles. Yo estuve mucho tiempo en una galería que vendía arte latinoamericano, que era la Galería Turralde, vendía Tamayo, Toledo, Zúñiga, Cuevas, Y Blancarte también, digo, no estoy presumiendo, pero ahí estaba yo también entre ellos. Me retiré y estoy regresando en un momento como este con Arlita. Da mucho gusto, Arlita, que me hayas invitado a esto. Uh, he mentions that he's been out of the scene, out of the LA scene for a while, and that he's very happy to be back. In the past, he was happily... Uh, and proud of having his art projected along with other great Mexican artists such as Tamayo, among many others. And he really wants to thank you, Alita, for helping him come back to the LA scene. He's very excited to be here. Mis últimas exposiciones han sido más contemporáneas. Me tocó hacer una, una exposición al mismo nivel 
con Ed Rucha en el Museo de Arte Contemporáneo de San Diego y me siento muy contento de esta época, mi nueva época. La tamayesca se quedó atrás. Eh, la de Rucha, pues está en el medio. Me interesa el arte moderno, contemporáneo, cómo viene empujando a la gente joven con las nuevas cosas. He's very happy with this new era. He's happy about his previous era as well. Um, he mentions, uh, he's talking about his era in San Diego, and he's very happy about this new contemporary art, which is uh, helping the younger generations to get interested in art and that it's making them push forward and to thrive and wish more when it comes to art. Yo he tenido en el Centro Cultural Tijuana un taller por 18 años, en lo cual, en el cual se formó una gran parte de la plástica del arte contemporáneo. Ok, so he mentions he has an art shop in Tijuana, which has been open for 18 years now, and that he's very happy to mention that in that art shop, uh, there has been a lot of contemporary art that's been uh, created in there. Mm -hmm. Uno, una de mis formas de enseñar es que mis estudiantes hagan series. El artista que no hace una serie nunca va a hacer nada en el arte. Si tú tienes una temática, esa temática, eso, haz 80 o 100 obras para que la tengas en la computadora de tu cerebro y la puedas retomar en el momento que tú quieras. Si no, nunca encontrarás lo que es encontrar en el, en el arte. So he mentions that one of his techniques when it comes to teaching is having his students to generate a series. Uh, by doing this, it impulses them into having this mental image in their brains uh, made of uh, plenty of art they want to express. And that by helping them with this series or with this uh, teaching technique, it impulses them to be better and it helps them to truly become an artist. En, en, eh, en el mundo, eh, bueno, las partes que me conocen del mundo o del país o de, o de México, de Estados Unidos, o sea, me conoce como un artista abstracto. Es, es, uh, se pretende mi fuerza y mi fuerte dentro del arte contemporáneo. Pero yo no hago caso a críticos ni a curadores. Yo me doy permiso a hacer lo que quiera. Yo creo que dentro del mundo completo, y se lo digo a todos ustedes, existe el artista curador. Eso existe. Y mientras no tengas el valor de ser un artista curador, de curar tú tu propia obra sin necesidad de que te la cure nadie, eh, nunca vas a llegar a ser quien quiere ser o quien pretende ser. He mentions that in different parts of the world, including the United States and Mexico, uh, art experts uh, put him under the category of an abstract artist uh, within contemporary art. However, he mentions that uh, he, by himself, he, besides an artist, he wants to call himself also an art expertise. And by doing it is not saying that he knows uh, more or anything like this. But what he's trying to say is that uh, by being your own critique, by criticizing your own art and by saying um, it's yours and uh, adapting it to your own perception is truly the only way you're going to make it go out there, not by having other people commenting over your art, by putting it under a category, by you generating your own category and being your own um, critique, you are doing what is best for you and your art. La, cura, la curaduría es un mal necesario porque los museos lo exigen y las galerías también. Entonces, deben existir, lógicamente. Pero yo creo que debemos comenzar a pensar en esta época contemporánea que no la hemos entendido todavía cómo viene, cómo viene empujando el arte, el arte conceptual, las nuevas ideas de las generaciones que todavía no llegamos a entender, que tenemos que entenderlas porque en este mundo estamos viviendo. 
Yo tengo 87 años casi, en marzo los cumplo. Pero yo estoy pendiente de todo lo que se hace en el mundo para poder, pe, poder pensar qué puedo hacer conmigo, qué pueden hacer las demás personas. No podemos quedarnos en algo que, que nos dé nada más uh, un solo pensamiento. El pensamiento es tan amplio, tan grande, tan moderno, tan sin línea, que hay que meterte a investigar. Tenemos este tipo de aparatos, como que estamos hablando ahorita, para informarte de todo lo que tú quieras y que tu cerebro comience a funcionar mejor. So he's saying that uh, people who dedicate to being art experts are necessary. He's saying they, uh, they need to exist in order for museums to be available, in order for art galleries to be available. However, he's mentioning that both art expertise and artists still have a lot to learn. That since we're living a new era and we're living new things each day, that we are obligated to push uh, further in order to, to keep learning and knowing what art, uh, ha what lies ahead, pretty much. And he's saying that on this new era, now we have cell phones, now we have technology, and what better way to keep us informed as to what's going on around the world when it comes to art and other subjects, Uh, so that way we can take it, adapt it, and generate better art. Verán, verán que en esta ocasión tengo una presentación de perros. Motivo no, no es abstracto, correcto, es casi abstracto porque es mi técnica. Es una técnica que Raquel Tibol en su época la bautizó como los neofrescos de Blancarte. Yo no sé si Raquel Tibol se equivocó, pero ella sí lo dijo. Este... Es una, es una serie, homenaje a Cholot. Cholot es el dios perro dentro de la mitología azteca, hermano de Quetzalcóatl. Entonces, quiero traer a Cholot a mi, a mi época. Ya me lo traje, llevo cerca de 150 obras de Cholot. De pequeño formato, como el que están viendo, y de gran formato también. Pero pintura moral, mural hecha a Cholot. Es un tema que casi terminó porque acabo de comenzar otro figurativo que se llama Pez Viejo, en busca del pez más viejo del mundo. Todo eso tenemos que inventar un mundo. El arte eh, no se busca. No se busca. El arte... El arte está ligado a algo que no existía, aparece ante ti. Muchos, muchas no, no gracias. Es algo, ya, no es algo que ya viste antes. Es muchas, algo que... Muchas gracias, Álvaro. If, if we could have uh, Kongi translate that last piece, I, I think because it's so late and we have a couple more artists, we're, we're going to have to wrap it up, but thank you so much. Uh, quiero, quiero, quiero cerrar con mi última frase. Mi última frase, como lo dije, mi última frase es, arte es encontrar algo que no existía y hacerlo tuyo. Eso es arte. So for this last piece, uh, so that he can wrap it up, uh, pretty much what you're seeing on screen right now is he's serious um, in honor to Cholotl, which is a god from the Aztec mythology. He's the brother of Quetzalcoatl, which was the biggest god in uh, Aztec culture. Um, he generated a, around 150 of, of those paintings you're seeing on your screen right now. Uh, his newest series is called In the Search of the Oldest Fish in the World. Um, however, he wanted to, on The series we're looking at right now, he wanted to bring a little bit of this Aztec mythology and bring Chorotl, uh, Quetzalcoatl's brother, into our era. And well, uh, he also mentioned he wants to close with a phrase that says, art is finding something that didn't exist and making it yours. And that pretty much summons everything up. So. Thank you very much, Alita. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for translating, Conky. Thank you so much, Alvaro. I, I'm going to go ahead and play and look closely at your work.
What's neat about these Alvaro has so many of these little 14 by 14s in different colors and you can mix and match them. So I just have a sampling, but if these are of interest to anybody, there are a massive number of them that you can create the most amazing combination. Battle for belonging. Every double has a call. With a stare, it can be open. Now you have it, now you don't. There are buildings, there are people. Walk around and look up to. Every swallow has its season. Every gallow has its noon. By the rhythm of your language, the sparkle in your stride. Talking riddles of the candy with a shield and open wide. The lesson you must learn, no one could ever teach. Open, open, reach for the stars. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining and for sending your work down from Orange County. You bet. I've been enjoying the whole presentation. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. Well, we'd love to hear a little bit about you and the work that we're showing. Well, the work that you're showing right now, uh, this is um, kind of a bit of a split personality. I, I dabble in two worlds. Uh, one is watercolor, which I love, but is so technical, and I, I am so precise in that. Everything has to be absolutely perfect. And uh, people, you know, they make the comment that, isn't it relaxing? I'm going, good God, no. It, <laughs> I'm a nervous wreck. So to get out of that world and to be able to plank loosely, I tried experimenting with the acrylic pores, and that's what you're looking at here. Uh, I love how the colors flow together, how the light just is immersed in every piece. Uh, I put additives in there that create cells that expand, and it's just a wonderful, I mean, you can plan what you think you want to have happen, and then you watch to see what it does. And it's just such a marvelous thing that the, the hardest part is to decide on the colors that you want to incorporate and the method you're going to use. And then it's just, as it's called, pouring the paint. Then we manipulate it, uh, do different techniques to get different effects. And I just, love the absolute abstract of the whole piece as opposed to the very tight restrictions to the watercolor where I usually end up doing uh, architecture. So it's just, you know, it might be the, the right side and the left side of my brain, I don't know. <laughs> but I love doing these. Yeah, they're absolutely beautiful. It's so fun to see them in person. Um, so the one on the left is titled Phoenix Rising. And right. um, that, that really speaks to me. Is there, is there any specific message you want to share about that? Well, um, it's hard to explain. Everything is done uh, with wet paint, layering more and more on top of it. It all has to be done while it's wet so that it will flow. Uh, 
then it's the manipulation of the, the canvas itself to get it to go in the direction you want it to go and to get it to stop at the right spot. Uh, it also incorporates uh, using a blowtorch to bring out the cells and to uh, get any bubbles out that might be in the, all those layers of paint. Uh, and when I'm finished with this, uh, it takes quite a bit, depending on how much paint I've used, it takes quite a bit for it to dry. And then I will, uh, especially if I'm going to resin it, which I believe all three of these have a uh, resin coating, um, it has to be treated, it has to be cleaned. Uh, all the aspects, uh, all the oils and Im impurities have to be uh, cleaned from the surface. And then uh, the resin is applied. And again, that's treated with a torch again. And then it's a matter of anywhere from 24 to 48 hours before the, the piece is completely dry. And a lot can happen in that time period. <laughs> so it, you're kind of watching it like a baby, you know, just to make sure everything's fine. But uh, the resin just adds to the color. It just makes it pop. Mm, um, I agree. Ordinarily, if, without the resin, it's not quite as that brilliant. That's why I like to go back in with the resin and bring out all those colors. Mm. And so this one is titled River Rocks, and this is titled Blues 2. So why don't we go ahead and play and take a look at it? OK. Many times um, I'll start with a piece uh, no as in uh, the river it's, uh, I didn't even know that's what it was going to be, I wanted to see the color combinations. That's this one in, in Phoenix Rising, it just, in looking at it afterwards, sometimes the hardest part is to come up with the name for it. Um, River Rocks, when this was finished, to me it just looked like I was looking through a, a tide pool and seeing the rocks below. Um, this one, um, I just love, really love the combination of Prussian blue and burnt sienna. Uh, and with the white as a negative space, it just, it was just perfect the way it was. I don't know if we could hear you over the music. What were you saying there, Emily? Oh dear. <laughs> I don't know where we lost it. Um, I don't know, just a quick caps, capsulation of the, the River Phoenix. Okay, this is blues. Um, it was the combination of the Prussian blue and the burnt sienna. I love that color combination as long as I've got white in there to break it up. Uh, that's why this one was done with a background of all white paint before I added the other colors. Uh, again, it's all wet the entire time you're working with it. And uh, adding in additives that when uh, the board is manipulated or the canvas is manipulated, it expands and the cells get bigger. And with the torch, it brings out more cells. And if you just have to know when to say stop and make sure it's level because it will keep moving if you're not careful. Um, so you babysit it a lot, but it's a wonderful loose experience and when it comes to, sometimes I have to look to family and friends for help in, in naming it because I just, there's too many things going on in my head. Uh, but it's just a wonderful experience. I, I suggest this for everybody. It's a great way to loosen up and have some fun. Messy, but fun. Well, and Emily actually teaches this sometimes uh, at Art Affair um, in Laguna Beach. So um, if People, uh, you know, next time Art Affair is held, keep an eye out for Emily's classes. I would love to take a paint pouring class with you. I would love, love, love to try this. Um, especially now that you told me I get to use a blowtorch. I've been jealous of Becky using a blowtorch this whole time. So now I'm <laughs> <laughs> I can't get Becky and I together in the same room. It could be dangerous. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> well, I'll be in booth C20 this Next summer, where it's already working on getting Art Affair up and going, 
Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what uh, the governor and, and the city of Laguna will let us do. But uh, we're going to try our darndest. It was very painful for all of us to have to stay home last summer. So we're going to get that thing up and going. I think you will. Okay, well, thank you so much, Emily. You're so welcome. Okay, last, uh, well, I guess we're going to loop back around to John Kokoza, who's on. But last art to show tonight is uh, by Paul Bond. Paul, are you on? Yeah, I am here. Wonderful. Thank you for joining. I know you have a lot going on in terms of everywhere that you're exhibiting. So I'm, I'm thrilled that uh, I have this piece that I, I love and look at every single day in my dining room and that you're able to join tonight. Yeah, my pleasure. I'll, uh, I'll probably be the shortest uh, here tonight since I just have the one piece with you guys right now. But um, so I'm a, I'm a uh, oil painter and I, I came from a illustration and graphic design background. I actually got a degree in commercial art and did illustration work for many, many years. Uh, and ultimately I came back around to my painting, but um, in the course of my commercial artwork, I did a lot of book design and book illustration and developed this, uh, essentially developed a style of my work that's very narrative because in the, in the illustration world, you're usually given a concept of a mental or literary concept and you have to come up with a visual reference for it. So as a result, all the work I create now, which is a, a genre of magic that I call magic realism is all very narrative. So every story, every painting is really a, a bigger story, <clears throat> excuse me, a bigger and longer story that I just have a snapshot of it. So this piece that we're looking at here is called A Hymn to the Summer of My Long Ago. And this was born from the idea as I was contemplating my childhood. I grew up, I went to school, lived in San Diego for a lot of years and went to college there. But I really grew up in Laguna Beach as a young kid on the beach there. And it was, as I look back on it, I really realized how much I ideal, idealized that that part of my life and how we compartmentalize certain experiences. And even if we talk to other family members, it's like they might remember something really different, but we've created this whole memory snapshot around something that we carry around with us. And so this is, this is a, as it says, a hymn. It's an ode to what, for me, like as I look back on it, was really an ideal kind of a childhood that I you know, and I think these memories too, we hold on to them because we tap into them as adults for various reasons. Sometimes it's just to like feel uplifted in our lives in the present. So um, yeah, that's that's kind of the story of my, this piece. And I, I'm up here in Laguna now and, and along with uh, Sean Brown, I exhibit at the Festival of Arts. And um, I'm just, I want to say Alita, I'm just like so impressed with the collection of artists and work Put together here. It's just a really, really honored to be a part of it. Now, yo nací en México también, soy de Guadalajara, but um, and it's it's wonderful to hear have all these Mexican artists um, as well. So anyway, I'll leave it at that, and uh, happy to be a part of it. Oh, thank you so much, Paul. Um, I, you know, you are the first person who took a risk and signed an agreement with me. And um, it, you know, your support has meant everything to me and mm. your work speaks to me and, and really my whole family in such a, in such a way. Um, for those who can join in person, uh, we have some books by Paul Bond. Um, mine is there for you to peruse, but you can also purchase them and, and really get to know all of his work and each one comes with either a poem or a special message. Um, and they're just, they're so deep and soulful. Um, and I also encourage people um, to go on your page, uh, your artist page on our website, um, because you can see this image uh, with you actually embellishing it. 
So he painted. Oh, I forgot to mention about the embellishing, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to talk about that a bit? Yeah, yeah. So um, this, you know, what we're looking at here is the, is uh, a limited edition G Clay print on canvas of the original, and um, through with Alita, um, I'm offering embellishing on my pieces, and so it's essentially a process where I. Um, I don't repaint the painting essentially because my work is really quite tightly rendered, but I, I um, add a medium that builds up the texture and builds up the surface. So it has the feel and the appearance uh, that the original had. Otherwise, when you create a print on campus, it's, it's really pretty smooth and slick. So these kind of bring back the essence and the feel of the original piece. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, well, let's play a little bit more. We'll zoom on in and Paul, thank you so much. My pleasure. Okay, well, we are going to loop back around to John really quick and then we'll wrap it up. And I just want to thank everybody for staying on so long. Um, you know, all of you mean so much to me and I'm so thrilled about uh, our first pop-up exhibition. Um, so John, I'll hit play and, and pull it up to the main shot and then we'll give you an opportunity to talk about it. I'm glad you logged in. Better late than never. <laughs> you know me, Alita. Um, so my name is John Cocosa, and I'm really, really, really stoked to be presenting with everybody on here tonight. I honestly am flabbergasted by uh, everybody's pieces in here, and I'm really stoked that Alita asked me to be part of this project, uh, combining people from California, people from Mexico, um, you know, because we're all on the same coast right here, all the Baja people. I think it's it's such a tremendous area of the world. There's so much to show. Um, I came out here 20 something years ago from the Jersey Shore um, because I just fell in love with San Diego. And I just, I can't get away from the city because I just discovered new places to shoot. Uh, I'm primarily a professional surfing photographer and um, this shot is called For Dawn's Sake, and it is actually named by a neighbor's friend. I was, I shot this photo at dawn. Myself and another presenter tonight, actually, Michael, who was the first presenter, I think, um, we swam out in the ocean at Coronado and the dark uh, very early in the morning. And uh, he was always interested in, I was always interested on in how he did his photography and he was interested on in how I did mine. And I told him, well, come on out with me and I'll try to get some shots of you in the water. Um, and we swam out in the dark and I was sitting out there treading water and this spot in particular, Coronado, the way it breaks, it only breaks very few times a year. And it's these pitching huge barrels that come in with these south swells that come up when Mexico is and Cabo, the people down in Cabo who are living there probably know in Cabo, the shore break is absolutely huge. Uh, this beach in general faces south, so it picks up the same swells that Cabo gets. And a lot of people, when I do these photos, think the first question I always get is, were you sitting on a surfboard? And actually, no, what you do is you put on a pair of fins and then you swim out into the water with one of these and you lock your camera inside of here and it's protective housing. And they usually can weigh anywhere from like five, 10, 12 pounds. And you basically just tread water and position yourself in the lineup. You take a bunch of test shots and get the exposures of what you wanna go for. And this one, we're looking south towards the Hotel Dell, which is just around the corner of the wave. And yeah, we were out there for about two hours plus just swimming around taking shots. And um, I was so amped on this photo 
that when I first had it printed, I brought it next to my next door neighbor's house and I was telling him about it. And it was actually a neighbor who named this photo. He's like, well, when did you take the photo? And I said, at dawn. And he's like, just call it for dawn's sake. Um, <laughs> I think as a photographer, we, we don't get, you know, uh, that's the difference, which is I think awesome between the photographers and the artists and I always, I always hesitated to call myself an artist and I always shied away from that because I have a lot of respect for people who can pick up paints and, and tools and, and create these just absolutely magical things. And if you listen to them tonight, you hear how much concept and emotion goes into what they're doing. Whereas for me as a photographer, you know, it, I just feel like I'm just kind of capturing a moment in time with my camera. And yes, it takes, there's, it's very technical on, on capturing these things, but um, you know, we're, we're just taking a snapshot in time that was something in real life. And you know, for the artists out there, you know, you guys have my utmost respect um, because you guys just create things from a blank canvas. Um, whereas as myself, I just go out there and I just see beauty and I, I, I capture it as, as best as I can. And, I love the concept of sharing the light because as you can see, this is, I mean, for a photographer, light is everything. That just that brief moment that the sun started to come up over the horizon and it casted that one ray of light straight through that barrel, you know, in that split second of time. And if I could show you a photo from an hour later, the same exact morning, the colors are completely different. And it's just those amazing little tiny seconds of time that light, you know, hits something in a subject and it just, you, know, you see the colors of that day or the dawn or whatever it is, the sunset. So that's for dawn's sake. And I really want to say thank you to Alita for putting this all together. She came to me with this concept. We live in the same town, Pacific Beach. And uh, honestly, like there's been two great moments so far in my career that you know, I was really proud of as being an artist. And one was decorating a hotel. And the second was when Alita came to me and asked me to be part of this project with all of you amazing people. So yeah, thank you very much for letting me participate tonight. Oh, thank you so much, John. Um, it means the world to me that you're part of this. And I love hearing more of, of the story of For Dawn's Sake, because I have been enjoying this um, you know, gosh, for almost a year now, and, and the colors are spectacular, and it's so peaceful, and um, so anyway, thank you so much for everything, and, and thank you, everybody, for joining. I'm going to post this on YouTube, and I'm going to try and um, go through and capture the exact second where each of you talks about your work and put a QR code on those little labels by your artwork so that when people come through the exhibition, if they wanna scan the QR code, they can pop up and listen to you talk about your work, even if you can't be there. So we're gonna do our best to, to really bring you into the exhibition, even though you know we can't necessarily do it with all of you due to the pandemic. Um, but I'm, I, I can't wait to see what happens in 2021. I wanna thank you all for being part of my dream. And um, I just can't wait to see how people respond to this in person because as amazing as it looks in this video, it is so much more impactful in real life. So anybody who can make it, um, we would absolutely love to see you there. Um, and uh, thanks again. Thank you, Alita. Thank you. Thanks, Alita. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Alita. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Oh, right. so amazing. Wow. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you. Thank you, Julieta. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Bye. Álvaro, un abrazo. Igual, Aleta, y un placer estar contigo. Y con todos los demás. Oh, bravo, Álvaro. You are so impressive, every one of you. I'm dazzled. That's my mother. It's fun to introduce her. Oh. It's <laughs> Wait, what? every day. Which is your mom? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hola. 
Hola. Venga, Soy Ole. Dime el arte. Bring them to Tijuana, Aleta. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Vive el arte. Álvaro, qué gusto. I wait, I wait for everybody en la panocha en Tecate. Así es. La panocha es mi estudio. We would love that. It's fabulous. Aleta, los puede traer acá a mi estudio a platicar un rato largo, tendido y con tendencias. It was a. Lo que ustedes quieran, aparte sobre lo que sea. It was a fabulous. He has so much work, and it's all lit up. I wanted to take it all with me, but there's like these 30 foot long pieces and there's no way that for me to get it there, but it's spectacular. So. Oh, they are all fabulous. Just absolutely amazing. All of you, my heart is bursting with the inspiration. Aleta, you have a beautiful mother. Oh. I, I, I love you and I, I love the art. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I agree with you, Manuel. She's beautiful inside and out. Okay. And for everybody, Alvaro just told us that we're invited to Tecate, right, Alvaro? Okay. Nos invitas a Tecate. Perfecto. I'll meet you there. Everybody, it's okay. It's a, it's a uh, big, big space and for everybody, you know. <laughs> yeah. Alvaro, it's yeah. a wonderful place to visit. So mm -hmm. we'll be joining him sometime soon. That sounds like a plan. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Good night. Good night. I'm sorry, English is not good, but I'm here in the cut. Hello, <laughs> Alvaro. <laughs> A tu salud. Salud, Álvaro. Salud, salud. Julieta. Adiós. Julieta. Todos. Bye, bye. Pero Adiós. me da mucho gusto ver a Aleta, hace mucho que la veo. <risa> Hermosa. <risa> <risa> ok, chao, bye bye. Chao, oh, bye. Nobody has a crush on you. <risa> Thank you for everything. Thank you. For be together. Okay, in, now I'm really in the Buenas noches a todos. Buenas noches. Buenas noches.